Hi, Igor. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, before we start, can you tell me a bit about yourself? What do you do at Kaspersky? I've been with Kaspersky since 2001. It was when viruses were still a thing. And we were analyzing real computer viruses with Eugene and many other teammates. And since then, I did quite a few things. I fought spam, I developed software infrastructure, but for maybe last decade, I have been focused on targeted threats, what we call APTs. I've been doing it with the Cray team. Initially, I started it as just an expert, but then after some years, I took a position of first head of Russian grade, and now I'm director of the global grade team. So basically, right now, I'm leading the whole team who are doing all this research. And recently, your team did a great announcement that was like an onion because it was falling out with many layers and it was about Operation Triangulation. So can you tell me more about it? What was so specific about this attack? This is very interesting on very many sides. First of all, it's us who were the target. We were the target, we were the victim, and we were the researchers. And, well, it's very interesting to analyze malware that mm -hmm. attacked you, yourself, your devices, and at the same time, it's mobile malware. This is still a pretty rare thing, and especially in iOS malware. And having an APT that is based for iOS, and that is basically working on your own phones, this is something very, very rare. Basically, a one in a million the time thing. But how did you find the intrusion of our networks? It was also pretty interesting. Uh, basically, we were just testing our CM solution, looking what was in our network, uh, because we have a separate network for Wi-Fi devices. And of course, as any researcher, we are always looking for something interesting and unique. Mm. And of course, mobile things are very unique still. And once we found something. It was really just an anomaly, just some domain and traffic that was outgoing for a domain that looked a bit suspicious. So first we didn't think that it was something interesting. But when we found out that there were only iOS devices that were connecting to these domains and sending traffic and it was repeating, this is when we started to suspect something. And when we got to the devices, made the backups and looked into them and found out that there is actually something happening inside. This was the moment when we understood that finally we have found a live APT malware in our hands on a mobile. Wow, that's impressive. But uh, now why triangulation was so bad? What was so specific about this attack? I wouldn't say that it was really bad because, well, I'm a researcher, something like that for me is a very good thing because, well, it's the best material for research. Yeah. But of course, it's bad on very many levels for the users. Because first of all, it's a very, very complicated targeted malware and it's virtually impossible to detect it if you are not an expert. And the amount of zero-day vulnerabilities that was used in that attack is amazing. We just discovered four used against us and it was on all levels. It was a zero click exploit that allowed to exploit the phone without interacting, without the user doing anything. Mm -hmm. And then several elevation of privilege exploits and then getting into the kernel of one of the most secure operating systems. On all these levels, the amount of sophistications, the complexity and the outcome is amazing. And uh, speaking about exploits, am I right that you have submitted all of them to Apple? What was their reaction? What was their action after that? Exactly, that's right. We submitted the exploit chain. Uh, we did it in basically two steps. And initially, when we submitted the samples to Apple, we were not sure that it was really a zero day because the samples that we had had internal limitations that didn't allow the exploits to work on the latest areas. And as we discovered later, all the vulnerabilities that were exploited were still there. They were not patched in the latest version of the operating system. Who were the initial targets in our company? There were two different groups of targets. 
and they are very different in what they do and how they work. One group were top managers of the company and the other are security researchers who actually analyze malware. Were there any victims outside of the company? We have created a dedicated email address. When we initially announced about our findings, we asked people to report if they have found something on their phones. And yes, we have received several reports of people finding traces of infection on their devices outside the company. But of course, we cannot disclose the private emails, so we cannot say who exactly were the targets. Now that is SAS is here, can you tell us what we are with this story now? Right now, we consider most of the story finished, complete. We think that we have told almost everything that we know about triangulation. But of course, given the amount of effort that was spent on developing the whole story, the malware, the framework, the infrastructure, we're pretty sure that the attack wouldn't just disappear, that it will be improved by the attackers and continue somewhere else, maybe with different targets, maybe on different versions of iOS or maybe even Android. Can you tell us some technical background on what it was and what it is actually? Sure. It wasn't just an onion in terms of how we uncovered the story one announcement after another. It was also the way that we discovered layers and layers of malware. It was also like an onion because first you find the initial exploit and this is it. You're done because you can't do anything until you decrypt it. Then you find a way to extract another layer. But then you find out that the next layer is also encrypted and you try to find ways to bypass all the security checks in every layer to get to the final payload. This is just layers after layers after layers, spending a lot of time on creating different tools to decrypt, the obfuscate. But finally, in the end, we got it. We got the biggest final implant. What would you advise to the users um, in order to be protected for, from this attack? It's pretty complicated because for such attacks, the amount of resources spent on just implementing the attack and if you just find out the market price for the exploit chain that was used it will be in millions of dollars so for a regular user it is very very complicated to prevent such attacks but of course there are measures that can be implemented even knowing how triangulation worked by using iMessage to infect the devices Turning on lockdown mode will improve the security for iOS very much. And of course, if you don't need iMessage, you can turn it off. Again, it was just a measure of delivery. Maybe next time the attack will use some other messengers, for example. So not using the messengers and means of communication that you don't need. Well, it's a good security measure if you think that you may be targeted. And of course, regularly uh, rebooting your phone, uh, not installing applications that you don't need. And for example, if you are using Android, use an endpoint solution like our antivirus. Do you think this is the last when we hear about this actor or do you think that they will continue their activities? Usually in the security space we operate in, targeted attacks that are very complicated and we're pretty sure that the actors behind them have a lot of resources. We usually assume that these attacks will resume after some time. Given the statistics of other APT attacks, it can take a month or two or maybe even several years, but we're pretty sure that such attackers, they return back.